the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you introduction we're doing now and i want to make sure i get that done real quick so that you can actually get into the words we'll break this the, the teaching uh into parts a b through d whatever and because we want you to be able to digest it right this is a study platform amen it, it, you know we always talk about the fact that we want to teach the gospel yeshua's way yeshua is jesus name in the hebrew that's what they called him back then yeshua and we want to go by what is written, just like when Christ was tempted in the wilderness, he, he dealt with the devil by saying what is written. The title we're talking about is your traditions of ignoring what God hates makes the word of no effect. And what I'm trying to tell you that is that in many cases we're trying to, uh, we, we, I mean, when you talk about what people have done the, the ministry of disqualification, the ministry of death. When we talk about people who have done uh, racism, we talk about lynching, we talk about uh, killing people uh, because they don't conform to what we consider Christianity. That, that Those are traditions of men to sit there to, to, to hurt people. Uh, you know, we did the crusade and the, the Spanish Inquisition and, and, and the militancy of what they call Christianity. And, and, and that's not teaching of Christ. Christ didn't teach violence. Christ didn't teach that you was to do. You'll find in the gospel where Christ taught you to do violence to people. He told you, he gave you a commandment to go and preach the gospel. And that's what we need to be able to do and not use the traditions of, of, of religious folks who sit there and try to intimidate you, hurt you, beat you up. And, and the bad thing about it is trying to impose a law on you that you don't even do, or they don't even do, excuse me. So the point is, we need to be able to get back to the doctrine and the teaching of Christ, not the traditions of men who makes the word, not, the word of God a matter of fact. And need the scripture I want to go by. You know, the scripture says no respect of person. So let's look at that. So that's what I want to go forward with it. And, and I, I think it's worth um, bringing up because so many times we sit there and we put each other down, fall fighting. And, and, and then we attack one another because of our weaknesses. Many of us lie about our weaknesses and try to hide our weaknesses because we we so busy judging each other and putting each other down and both sit and say, I pray for you. Pray for me too. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray to, to go after the strongholds in our lives individually. Because until you get your own stronghold squared away, how can you attack somebody else? And why do you attack someone else? Christ didn't attack people. Christ loved people. The only people he did were the people that sit there and try to impose their will there and try to enforce the laws and act like they didn't do anything wrong themselves, but they did. And they have. The same thing for many of you. You're doing some things that are wrong, right? You're doing some things that, that doesn't line up with, with the will of God in your heart. You know, unforgiveness is something that he said, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. Not what scripture has, let's be going to have that. You, you, you got hate, and you got disgust. And then, then on, that, on top of that, many of you who sit there and go after people, you consider, you know, find and fault with they said, you did it, you're doing it yourself in the back and booth in the corner in the dark. I mean, it's a trip. How many times you find when people sit there and talk about adultery? We talk about ministries, people in ministry, and they commit adultery. And then guess what they're saying? I'm a man. As if that, or oh, I'm a woman, forget it. And the brothers will make a difference. Not in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of God, the fact is that you need to repent and, and get your act together. Well, that's the same thing for any other area. But, and then when, when man sits there in the social construct of skin color, 
There's no repentance out of skin color, people. So why would you go and hate somebody? Why would you sit there and go and dog somebody? Why would you sit there and bring in bad fruit with somebody knowing that they can't change their color, whether you're white or you're black or brown? You can't change your color. So to make that a sin, to make that a disgust, and to try to project that image on the people and say, this is who you are, opposed to the fact that, guess what? God loves you too. And, and, and he, he can, He's redeemed you as well. All you have to do is receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And, and, and you're accepted by Him. But we make a social construct, and I talk about for religion and problems, I mean, being religious and sit there and hurt people. You, you, you're off. You're off. No human being is supposed to be treated. That's not what he called you to do. I don't care about what the world does. I'm talking about what we do. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to love the world and try to help the world come to receive Christ. We're supposed to let our light shine. But yet we have allowed darkness and gross darkness to, to say that we can do anything to somebody that don't claim to be what we want them to be, you know? And yet some of us have sit there and put on evil, have put on the title, you know, sheep, the wolves in, in, in sheep clothing. Because some of the things we're talking about with the lynch and everything else, you know that there's those, those wolves. You can't tell me they were sheep. Because sheep wouldn't do that, would they? The wolves would, would do it. It will tear ourselves apart. And then we take on that identity, which we, as some are talking about, some of us who profess to be Christian, I'm talking about a large percentage of people. All those people used to do that stuff. Where do you think they're at now? Where do you think they are right now? Think about it. What do you think of those people who died of hate. Where do you think they are right now? But isn't that important for you to know that? Because where they go, where they went, if you die in your sin, if you die in hate, do you think you where do you think you go? What 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 are you what are you gonna do before you go before the God? And I'm talking, I'm talking about you, everybody, the Bible said to work out your own salvation. And if that's the case, then why don't you work on your salvation instead of trying to find somebody else that, that is, is not living up to the, uh, the standards that you consider it. Uh, let me see here, make sure I put this down. I got the... I, I, I'm gonna try to get that. That uh, I got it on uh, YouTube playing. I'll check uh, Facebook later. But the whole point is that we have a responsibility to line our life up based on the word and the will of God, not the will of man. You're not. You, and I said, come time before. I guarantee you. There it would be no person called white standing beside you on the day of judgment to advocate on your behalf. Why? Because none of them died for your sins anyway. No rich person, no billionaire is going to stand by you and advocate on your behalf when you stand before God. No black person, no African American person, no Jewish person, no none of those people will advocate on your behalf. And you know the sad thing about it? Even you won't be an advocate on your behalf because you are guilty of sin. You're guilty, especially the bad thing about it, it'd be worse if you're guilty of hate. You'd be guilty of murder. But Christ, 
is our advocate if we get and move into him and let him be our advocate and then we need to submit to him and his teaching that's what he's trying to say if you submit to the teaching not the teaching of man not the teaching of systemic racism not the teaching of of of, of, of any of gangsterism or whatever you want to call it teaching of Christ. That makes a difference. That's what he's asking us to do. It's for us to focus on that. So, let's get into the topic. I know I talk a long time, but you know it's worth it. Because I want you, I, I was trying to build the atmosphere of what we need to do according to the will of God. Amen? So, this is a subject that I, I'm working on today. I'm using a picture uh, of the type of picture of uh, one of my other messages, right? The color shirt, because I got green on, right? I need to work on that. I'm gonna, I may have to do that before I actually started and put the color of the shirt on. But anyway, if you look at the, the subject, it says, teaching the gospel, which is what, what our theme is, Yeshua's way, which is the Hebrew name for Jesus, it is written, we focus on what's written. Your traditions of ignoring what God hates makes the word of no effect. And I didn't have enough space in there, but in you. In you. I mean, it, 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 it does affect other people because if you confess yourself to be a believer, but you act contrary to being a believer, then you, your words do not have an effect on other people. Not the word of God, not the teaching of God. You, it'll have an effect on your hate. It'll have, have an effect on your, the things of the flesh, the works of the flesh, but not of God. It has no effect. You can't be an effect of ministry. If you use temptation and hate to your fellow man, and you can't, you can't, no matter what you say, you can't use your denial to say that you you can do what you want to your fellow man because that does not fall up with the teaching of Christ. All I'm trying to sit there and say is let your life line up with the teaching of Christ, not the teaching of the world. Because the world can't save you. The world can't give you eternal life. Christ can. And we know that. So you just stop calling yourself a Christian. And be the world. Be cold. And that's what you are. And chose to be. But don't lie about it. Okay? You know, Nehemiah, you see the script I put down here, Nehemiah 8 8. So they read in the book, and the law of God distinctly gave sense and caused them the understanding of the reading. That's what we're trying to do. That's the that's the point of this platform. Because I'm gonna confront you, I'm gonna confront myself and say, am I lining up with God? Now, with that in mind, the the type we want to sit there and cover. Uh, what I consider the Lord's Prayer is, is something that we should start off with and even starting when we talk about a message and going to a message we should pray. In this case, though, I say we should pray in the manner in which Christ taught us. And, and, and that's in Matthew 6, 9. And then as I go through it, you, you're going to check out one piece and it says the will. The will. Verse 9, after this man therefore pray, this is Christ. So you don't have to do this for Baylor. But it says this matter you should approach your prayer. This disciples ask the Lord teach us how to pray. This is what it's saying. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, meaning you reverence him. You don't reverence the color of your skin, people. You don't reverence your, your wealth. You reverence him. You pray to him. You don't pray to money. You don't pray to people. You pray to him. That kingdom come, meaning his system. His system, which is in heaven. His system, which is in heaven. Christ said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
his system which matters. His system gets you to him. Not the world system. Thy will be done. That is the most critical piece of statement in every law, every prayer that you make. Just like Christ did it when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. My question to you, are you letting the will of God be done in your life? When you hate somebody, when you despise somebody, when you judge somebody, are you doing his will? Or are you doing the world's will? He said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That is the first sentence. Come on, saints. Of, the, of, the, of, of how to pray to God is for you daily. And they're going to say, Give us this day our daily bread. He said, give us this day our daily bread. That means daily. Is to ask yourself, am I doing the will of God? I ain't talk about the Ten Commandments. I ain't talking about the 613 laws that they try to pull and tell people how to do. I'm talking about the will of loving one another. That's what I'm talking about. He's sitting there saying, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven daily are you asking what you do because when you sit there and have to you know you said when lynching and i use i'm using that because that's the backdrop of tradition that that lasted almost oh, 1968 wow but from 1882 to, into 19 1868 but then the slave trade itself was you know the slavery lasted for almost 400 years and the brutalities and the raping and the murdering and the, and, and, and the atrocities that done to that. Traditions. The crusade. The Spanish Inquisition. All those things were the tradition of man. And where is the will of God, the teaching of Christ in it? You and Christian, I'm talking to you as Christian. We, we, we know about the children of Israel. We know the things that they did. And all that was part of an example. What I'm sitting there saying is, you that profess yourself as Christians, do you ask, is his will, God will, being done in heaven and in earth. Are you doing the will that is in heaven? Are you doing that in earth? Come on, saints. Let me get off to this for screen for a second. You see, are you doing? That's what you have. That's that's something that every last one of us should ask ourselves daily. Am I doing the will of God? Am I doing the will of the Father in heaven? Because when you sit there and hate and divide and create division and you lie and you do, you steal and you curse and you beat one another up, you do things that are contrary to His will. How are you asking yourself when you wake up every day? And said, I will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Are you asking yourself, are you doing the will of God? Are you doing the will of the Father? And if you don't know the will of the Father, that's what the Word of God is for. That's why He wants you to sit there and read the Word daily. So that you can know what His, you find His will in His Word. And I guarantee you, you won't find murder discrimination. You will find selfishness. You will find pride in his teaching. You won't find those things that, that, that is harmful to your fellow man. You won't find those things that even Cain did to Abel. 
do the will of God in your life daily. Ask yourself, am I doing His will? The minute you sit there because of the false, these sanctimonious people that act like they got it all together, and you sit there and say, I got to be like that, I can't be like that. No. You, you, you've been letting people break in. That's one of the things about religious people. They sit there and go after the small thing, where you went to the football game, where you went to the club, where you dance, oh, where you put on a makeup and all that other stuff. And, and they, the way to the matter is love. That's more important than what, how you braid your hair, what clothes you put on. And some of you, do your sanctimonious self, you sit there and try to make that more important than the fact that you're loving one another. That's the way to imagine, loving one another. And yet many of us are taught to how to do the, the hate, how to do the, 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 the find the faults of you didn't go to church last week, you didn't go to church in a whole month. You, you don't even go to church. You don't even pray. You know, you look at the, 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 the religious things. Yeah, they're religious things. Because he said, after this man, therefore pray ye. You can pray any way you want to, but pray within a man of God. He at least prescribed to you that this is the best way to pray. You can pray any way you want to. But he just said, is, I mean, I go to use this man of prayer. But some of you sit there and say, well, you don't go to church. You know what? In, in, in a, <clears throat> those of you who are in Christ, you are the church. When somebody comes to you, you are the church. The church is not the building. The church is you. And they deal with you and they're talking to you at that time. They are in church. <laughs> you are the church. You, maybe we forgot that, didn't we? Because we talk about, well, you didn't, you didn't go fellowship with me. Well, no, you fellowship with the church right now. Because that person must be the church. And the problem where the issue is that those people that they consider the walls, the church, is because they're not the church. They're just pretending to be the church. And they're pretending to do God's will. Because the will of God, what's the will of God to go preach the gospel? Putting somebody down and condemning somebody is not the gospel. The gospel means good news. How do you find good news out of sitting there telling somebody to go to hell? How do you sit there and find, where do you find the good news sitting there despising somebody because they don't line up according to your, your expectations? Hmm? Think about it. Uh, that's important for us because that's where I'm coming from. Your traditions, your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.